What is up, all you GBA type fans? This is Tom. I'm here bringing you guys week four, our team. I guess you can call it a breakdown, but it's kind of more like a team showcase. But for sake of the thumbnail, I'm going to call it team breakdown, right? So this week, going up against Dan, someone who I'm very interested in playing in. We did play at the latter end of season three of the GBA, like the last battle before the GBA officially went. <laughs> That's an explosive noise. Um,. But now I get to face him after coming off of a championship season last year. Dan is certainly someone that I did not honestly expect at first to become as good as he did in terms of this format. Take nothing away from him. Uh, from when we started, when he he came in season three, I was like, you know, he'll he'll adjust. But going from you know collapse season to season four runner up to season five champion. You know, I, I can't help but applaud him. He's a great battler, great competitor. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, who are you? And what are you watching my channel for? Uh, but with that being said, let's go into the breakdown. So, with his team, my main like concern is Victini and Rotom Wash. Now, Victini, because it's offensive, wide variety of moves, can go special or physical. And the other thing, too, is that it having U-Turn... And being able to switch out alongside things like Flygon and uh, Galvantula, you know, the U-Turn and, or, yeah, and Rotom as well. Getting that U-Turn Volt Switch type uh, pivots on me, I'm trying to avoid. So, primarily, Rotom has a solid typing. I think I've had trouble with both Rotom's types now, the Rotom Heat Form and now Rotom Wash. Rotom in its own right is pretty damn good against this team. Um, you know, its typing is good. There's very few things on my team that could take it on effectively. And, you know, I have to do my best to try and wear down the Rotom, whether it's, like, Toxic Stalling. But my main concern is that these two, I think, are primarily going to be his Scarf Mons. I think that Victini might be a Choice Scarf variant with, like, U-Turn. Or he could even go Banded. But I have to find out ways to combat that. Now, Rotom, I think its typing is just too good for it not to be offensive of some type. You know, maybe a trick to kind of cripple a wall of mine, something like Jellicent, Arcanine, or, you know, maybe even something like Cobalion. Um... And then, it, you know, it's, it's stabs are pretty damn good because a lot of my mons I have to make like a 50-50 guess because Volt Switch can hit Starmie, uh, Zatu, Mega Aerodactyl super effectively. Uh, Hydro Pump can hit, you know, uh, Mamoswine, Arcanine, again, Mega Aerodactyl super effectively. So I have to pick my poison with Rotom essentially. And then Victini, Dan is so versatile at with the way he plans, I don't expect him not to bring a, an effective Victini set. So I have to dispatch this thing very quickly. And I have ways around uh, doing that, but... Victini is always a threat. V-Crate is never anything to sleep on, so those two are primarily in my head as something I have to look into. Now, Dragology, I have, like, a switch in. And it's not even a good switch in, like, it's Sylveon, but the thing is, it goes, you know, I dodge the dragon move, but he can make a very easy prediction and go for Sludge Wave, as Dan is known to do in the past. Galvantula, him setting up Sticky Webs is not a good thing for my team, so I have to bring something like Zatu to combat that, or Starmie has to Rapid Spin, but I'm not going to bring it in on his on a Galvantula. And then, you know, other things, like if he puts HP Ice, I can't use Glygarder to Defog. Uh, Mega Dactyl, you know, is weak to its stab, so... Uh, Galvantula also gives me a huge problem. Not only that, but Volt Switching, too. I, I do not need him Volt Switching around my team. Not very many things want to take that, and if he wants to run, like, Focus Blast, Focus Blast or Giga Drain, or even Energy Ball, he can also hit Mammoth Swine super effectively. Uh, Dragology just hits super hard. That's kind of the bottom line with those two. They're a pain in my ass being Galvantula, and then Dragalgy is just such a beast. If I've learned anything from the CCL, Dragalgy knows how to tear shit up. Now, for people who watched me in Season 3 when I faced Cooper, you'll get this Chansey joke in the corner. Uh, that's a thing from Season 3 where when Cooper had it, uh, that was like the running joke. Anyway, some of you will laugh at that from watching me in the past. Others of you will not, but... Uh, Chansey is a fat, fat, fat blob. And I hate it because of that. It is too goddamn fat, and I always have trouble dispatching this thing because it's so annoyingly good. Like, I think at one point I was using a Terrakion against Chansey, and I went for, like, close combat, and it didn't die. And I was like, what the hell, man? So, with Chansey, my, my biggest worry is just how do I whittle this thing down? There's so many options he... Like, you know, I'll go into my, what my team is going to take care of uh, individually, but my whole thing with Chansey is just how do I take care of this thing so that it doesn't become a giant pain in the rear uh, in the long run of this match. 
So that's my first line. Sorry, I got a little long-winded on that. You know, those things are my main like threats. Like I don't see a reason for him not to bring four of those five. You know, maybe he's not gonna bring Galvantula or Dragalge, but I certainly see Rotom and Victini. And like I, de I can see Chansey as well because it's just such a good as a special sponge. Uh, next up though, these things are also very likely to come. I think Ferrothorn is a solid defensive check to a lot of things on my team. Mega Aerodactyl can hit with Fire Fang, but if he runs like a Rocky Helmet or, you know, he runs like, I don't know, fucking Aquaberry or something, that could be a really good option. But it's also a Ferrothorn, so I'm going to get hit with Iron Barbs, Rocky Helmet, that's another percentage. He can always go for Gyro Ball and like pretty much one-shot me, if not one-shot me, depending on my uh, bulk investment. Mega Altaria, I only really have one switch in, which is what the pick and crew basically harped on, that Arcanine, but I've realized that, so I'm not going to make Arcanine my dedicated wall to Mega Altaria. I'll find ways, you know, around picking that thing off, and it's good, but it's it's manageable, I'll say. I think there are ways I could take care of it. Starmie hits a lot of his things very hard. Mamoswine as well with priority. You know, if he's the Cotton Guard set, that's a problem. But again, Starmie hits spe on the special side. He has to put a decent amount of special investment in. And then uh, just, I could pick it off or I could just strip knock him out if he isn't Cotton Guarded up with uh, Mamoswine. Now, Metacham is okay as a threat. I I have ways of taking care of Metacham. As a matter of fact, I think with enough speed investment with, with a Mega Aerodactyl, a Scarf Metacham does not even, can't outpace it, so I will kill him with a Aerial Ace or a Wing Attack. And then Gorgeist is annoying. Uh, I've, I've found ways of taking out Gorgeist. My team is very decent at taking out Gorgeist. I have a lot of, you know, different options to take care of it, whether it's, you know, like I said, Mamoswine, Starmie, uh, Mega Aerodactyl, uh, Arcanine, whatever. I, I'm not necessarily worried about Gorgeist then going in a Flygon. Yeah, it's a pivot, but it's it's just a glorified U-Turner. It's a good glorified U-Turner, but a glorified U-Turner nonetheless that also features Draco sometimes, or Outrage. He did a good job using it last week against Lars, but I don't think he's going to find the same success if he uses it against my team this week. Because I also have a Mamoswine, so I could just go for Ice Shard, whether or not he's Scarfed, and I'm not sure it's staying on that. And finally, Hitmontop. I think Hitmontop hinders him a little bit more than it helps him because it's, I mean, it's an Intimidator, but I feel like Ferrothorn helps him a little bit better, and I have a lot of things that could take on Hitmontop effectively, if not totally, you know, kick its face in. Or spin its face in? I don't know. Anyway, that's how I see his team. I So my prediction for his team is going to be something like Definitely Victini, Rotom, Dragalge. I would like to see... Galvantula, and then like Mega Altaria and Ferrothorn, but I could also see Chansey, and I'm pretty much going with those seven, or eight, so I should say. Seven, yes, okay, so I'm gonna go with those seven, and that's pretty much what I'm gonna go with going into the battle, but we're gonna look into my team now. So my team is looking, it's, now you're gonna, you're gonna ask yourself, Tom, you're bringing five offensive mons. Yes, yes I am, and it's going to work out this week, because the only real way I could feel like I could beat Dan's team is to continually put pressure on his team. Now, he has very limited switches to a lot of these mods. Starmie, uh, I'm running three, it's Dual Stab, Ice Beam, and Toxic. Now, Dual Stab hits a, a lot of these mods super effectively. Uh, Psy Shock hits Dragalge. If I can knock off the Violite or just otherwise get a fair amount of damage off on Chansey, Psy Shock hits Chansey on the physical side. It also hits Hitmon Top super effectively. Uh, Ice Beam. Hits Mega Altaria, it hits uh, Flygon, Dragalge, <clears throat> you get the gist. And then Toxic is kind of a utility move. Now Toxic can be put on something like Chansey if it's his last Mon, Rotom, uh, tr 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 Mega Altaria, you know, if it's not status, and you know, uh, Starmie is going out speed if it's not getting its Dragon Dances up, and it can slowly but surely wither away or put it on a timer so that I can handle it with either Starmie or something else. I'm going to get an E-Belt this week so it's not choice locked. Also, no Life Orb because I don't want it to get withered down way too fast if it has to take hits from other things like, uh, I don't know, Rotom or Chansey Seismic Tosses or what have you. Next up, we have uh, Aerodactyl. This thing is running, at, I believe, 228 speed to outpace a uh, Scarfed Metacham. I'm just going to confirm that. It is, in fact, yes, yes, that's true. I I, I ran that, oh, sorry, 200, yeah, 228 speed. Now, that's, like I said, to outpace the Scarfed Metacham. It's also, it also outpaces a fair amount of his team. <clears throat> I think, obviously, if, if a teeny is Scarfed or Galvantula is Scarfed, I don't outpace it, but I think it's enough that I could hit the Galvantula, you know, and kind of 
like wreck it or if it's switching from rocks, whatever, what have you, it can pretty much knock it out with an aerial ace. I also have Pursuit because this is the way that if his Victini is choice in any way or goes for V Create, with that defense drop and the speed drop, I'll be able to Pursuit Trap it. If it stays in, I pretty much do with the defense drap like all of his HP. And if he because it does 63 to 72% if he's just like an offensive variant and he stays in, he doesn't go for U-turn. And if he gets the defense drop with the V-Create, I get a dead Victini uh, from Mega Aerodactyl. Next up, we have a Choice Scarf Mamoswine. Now, Mamoswine this week is specifically just a revenge killer. Uh, obviously, I can't touch. It has knockoff, no freeze dry because freeze dry just did not do enough damage for me. But knockoff for the Ferrothorn, knock off some items. Uh, Ice Shard, uh, Icicle Crash, Earthquake. The standard set that I've run the past like three weeks now. But the Ice Shard is going to pick off the Flygon if, it, if you choose to bring it. Uh, Icicle Crash can also hit something like Ferrothorn without getting the Iron Barbs damage. And then you have uh, Icicle Crash also for the Dragology, and Ice Shard just as nice priority for Mega Altaria, Calvantula, stuff like that. The only problem with this set is that, is that the Rotom pretty much takes it on very well, and Earthquake is obviously nullified by things like Levitate, or... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, the rest of his team is very grounded. Next up, we have AV Machamp, something that I've become very privy to. AV Guts again, actually. This thing has Close Combat, Knock Off, Ice Punch, and Heavy Slam. Now, Heavy Slam, Ice Punch are both going to be predict predictive game-type moves, because if he brings a Mega Altaria on, a predictive Knock Off for Close Combat, go for Heavy Slam, I can knock out the Mega Altaria. Ice Punch, same ideal. And it could also hit things like Flygon, Gorgeist, stuff like that. Uh, close Combat pretty much punches the spikes in on Ferrothorn. And then, you know, knockoff is just a great utility move. Like, there's really no downside to uh, clicking knockoff. Main pro main thing from a chant that I don't think people are getting on my team, and I want to, you know, express this verbally so they stop commenting it, the champ is not meant to live the entire game. It's there to absorb status and look at, like, the movesets of the mods. Obviously, uh, what I expect stats to come from is things like Chansey, Ferrothorn, Rotom. What am I going to switch on those things? three things? Machamp. And it's going to take that status and attempt to, you know, then put a hell of a lot of pressure on Dan's team. Dan realizes that this thing's a threat. I realize that this thing's a threat to whatever team I bring it against. Like, it was my main deterrent to Toxic Spikes against George. So, I'm going to use that again for Dan. Uh, I'm going to use Machamp just to kind of absorb some sort of status and attempt to get off a big hit or, or a good prediction to knock out something. Regardless, a stab you know, or just a guts boosted whatever is going to hit even a defensive Ferrothorn, or a defensive Rotom pretty fucking hard, so I'm not really that worried. Uh, next up, we're going to go over my last defensive mod. It's a max speed to speed tie with a Timigal Vantula Akaberry to take a Flare, uh, not a Flare Blitz, I'm sorry, a V-Create from Victini Cobalion. Now, this thing, once I, you know, you activate the Akaberry and I'm at a pretty good standing of health, it's like 38 to 44% from a V create, assuming it's not banded. Now, if it's Life Orb, does a little bit more. If it's Choice Scarf, does a little bit less. Actually, I think that's the calc for Choice Scarf. But this thing is meant, it has Stone Edge and Volt Switch, Stone Edge to hit the Victini super effectively, Iron Head to hit the Mega Altaria super effectively, Stealth Rock, duh, and Volt Switch to get out of there. Now, my, my ideal with this Cobalion is such that if he brings if Starmie like kills something or gets something you know dies to Victini I'm just bringing in Cobalion because I could live if he create and I get and if he tries to over predict and goes like Bolt Strike if he's not choiced uh, I pretty much can get big damage off if not critted with the Stone Edge I'm not banking on the crit but Stone Edge is going to do a hell of a lot of damage to Victini assuming that I uh, you know he stays in or he or the defense drop just outright kills him if he doesn't expect the Akaberry now I'm going to go over my only wall. My only wall this week is, in, of course, going to be Zatu. Zatu this week is running Psyshock Heatwave, Psyshock to hit the Dragalge, to hit the Hitmontop, to hit the uh, Chansey on the defensive side, and then Heatwave is to hit the Ferrothorn. Now, this... Oh, it also has Roost and T-Wave. Um, the T-Wave is to cripple things like Mega Altaria or uh, Victini, but also like Dragalge because, you know, a full power on a Dragalge is pretty fucking nice. Now, this thing is running enough speed, because it is base 95. Yes. Uh, it's running enough speed to outpace a max speed impish hitmontop. Say it again. Max speed impish hitmontop. That means that he has to run a substantial amount of speed on his Rotom to outpace uh, the Zatu. 
So I'm running like because Rowan's base 86, this thing's base 95. I'm running enough to actually like you know put me in a certain speed tier that I don't get outpaced by some of his faster things. I think you know the Metacham is still gonna outspeed me, the Flygon's still gonna outspeed me, but I can also I believe outpace the Mega Altaria, assuming he's not running uh, any or much speed investment. So, and this thing completely shuts down the Chansey, it shuts down the uh, Ferrothorn, and it, I think it also shuts down the Gorgas as well, because I could T-Wave it, I could also Heat Wave, I can continue to Roost and not really worry about much. Uh, so I'm really liking Zatu this week, I think it's my best wall. No, I'm not bringing Arcanine, I, I thought it, was, it hampered me way too much, he has way too many things to bring into it. I'm not going to be intimidating, if he knows in, that I have Arcanine, he's going to pivot out effectively with uh, Victini or, you know, it's just going to end up taking a lot of hits from things I don't want to take hits from. Yeah, I can use for Mega Altaria, but the risk of him having Earthquake is way too high. I don't want him de-dancing in my face, so then what am I going to do besides, like, roar out and let Arcanine takes damage on top of Hazard, so. And I just like offense way too much in this team, and I think that's about fucking time that I show how good this team could be offensively, so. That's my team. Sorry, that was really long-winded. I just want to get a lot off my chest and explain really thoroughly about this team. Any questions you guys have, put in the comments. I'm going to upload this really late at night. I'm going to put the battle up tomorrow about at 3 o'clock on Sunday. And this is going to be going up at about midnight. Uh, but I just wanted to get it up so you guys could enjoy it for tomorrow. And we can have a separate video because I don't want a 30-minute... At this rate, it will be like 35 minutes with this and the battle. So, comments in the comment section. Love talking to you guys. We'll see you in the battle. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed and... Let's look forward to a great match first Dan. Let's go. Welcome to the Shark Tank.